Hey guys, so let's chat, okay? Before I get started on today's topic, I first want to um, inform you all, all of you who do not follow me on Instagram, I am currently um, an applicant for the Sephora Squad Influencer Program, and they're pretty much looking for influencers, people who are trying to be influencers, who are unfiltered, not so sorry, storytellers, and who are who are authentic in who they are. And I think that that's me. So I applied and I would really appreciate it if after you guys watch this video, you can go to the link in the description and just leave me a simple testimonial. Why you like my content, why you continue to watch my stuff and what you get out of it. And a couple words, two sentences, submit, and you done did your girl a good, good favor, okay? Also, before I start, I want to give a special birthday shout out to Ayana Williams, aka Yana Cello. Please follow her on Instagram. You won't regret it. That's Y A N N A C E L L O. No spaces, no nothing. Yana Cello. She is a beautiful, big booty, trap listening, um, black woman who plays the cello. Book her, okay? Book her. Her, baby is booked and busy, okay? She is the next best thing that is here, okay? So, now that I'm done with my little introductions, my announcements, my spiels, a lot of people ask me for this video after my last video. So, today we're going to be talking about attachment styles. Everybody was like, I need to, I need to follow up video. I need to know what book that is. Here you go. Amazon, probably like $10, $12, attached, literally. It is going to come right up. The authors are Amir Levine, MD, and Rachel S.F. Heller, okay? And we will be referring to this all video long. So, don't worry, okay? So, let's go ahead and get started. So, just to give you a little more history, I briefly mentioned this in the last video, but we're going to go ahead and talk, it again, talk about it again because we're on the subject. So, the attachment theory itself. Um, derived from a psychoanalyst. His name was John B Bowlby. Y'all gonna read me for this. I always struggle to pronounce his last name. B-O-W-L-B-Y. John Bowlby. Whatever. Um, and he originally started looking at attachment theory and developing it when he did an experiment that involved observing distressed toddlers and infants when their mothers would leave the room. And so attachment in general just refers to the, a bond, a bond, a relationship with somebody, um, and what that typically looks like. So in the experiment, he had several different babies and moms come in, they would sit in a playroom and interact, play, and then all of a sudden mom would leave. So mom would stay gone for a little while, a couple minutes. When mom returned, the reaction is what indicated what type of attachment style that baby most likely had. So, if the mom returned and the baby ran right up to mommy, real happy, um, excited to see her, and was not emotionally distressed by it, that means that that baby has a secure attachment with their mother. If mom comes back and the child is very fussy, very fussy, very fussy, very hard to calm down, and clings to mom and doesn't want to continue playing anymore, that child has an anxious attachment style. And if mom comes back and baby gets upset, kind of runs to mom, wants to cuddle, and then kind of avoids mom or ignores her completely, that's an avoidant baby, okay? So that's just a little example to show you how these things typically look. Um, and so now this theory has pretty much been applied to how we create relationships and bonds with people in adulthood. Okay, so I'm going to run this chat similarly to how I run the group that I do at work that where I do this whole concept. I teach, uh, again, I work with women who have mental illnesses, substance abuse, eating disorders, all that type of stuff. So I have a relationship dynamics group that I run, and this is one of the topics that we cover because it's very important to understand how your attachments as a child, how you've grown up through life, project onto your relationships as an adult. So... Because I'm going to run it like that, I have a couple of references. I have the book, um, and I have an additional article that I typically use when I do this group because it has a lot of other fun fact information about attachment styles that the book 
kind of covers, but in a different capacity. And then I have another um, worksheet, which, just, which is just a chapter pulled from the book that is specifically um, focusing on explaining the attachment styles themselves. And it has the quiz. So what I did was, because in my group, I would typically give all my clients um, a copy of the quiz at the beginning of the group, and I would let them sit there and take it. It's about a 45 it's a 45 um, statement questionnaire where you are supposed to, it, it gives you three columns and you identify only the ones you believe to be true. So, and to kind of replicate this, um, I did a poll on my Instagram for those of you all who do not follow my Instagram or and want to participate in polls, please follow me at bringitbrat underscore, that's B-R-I-N-G-B-R-A-T underscore um and that's also in the info section of my channel so what i did was on my instagram story i did a poll where i included nine of the 45 statements um i used three for anxious three for avoided and three for secure and so i pretty much told my followers to only click yes if the, they find the statement to be true when they are in a relationship I think some people was a little confused about a, a couple of them, but I'm going to go over all of that for the people who are specifically watching this to find out what the implications of their answers are. Um, so pretty much, oh, and I also, just so y'all don't think I'm weird, I have my computer up, which has the results and the questions on it so that I can reference those when it's time. So because I only did nine questions, the results won't be pr foolproof. Like, if you answer some for yes and some for no and you all mixed up, baby, you got to get the book. You got to take the, the uh, quiz. And I think there are even varieties of that quiz on um, online if you Google attachment style quiz. Um, so pretty much if you answered yes to questions one, four, and seven, that indicates that you could possibly have an anxious attachment style. Um, if you answered question yes to questions two five and eight that most likely means you uh have characteristics of an avoidant attach attachment style and if you answered yes to questions three six and nine you most likely have a secure attachment style um and so i'm gonna go through each of these questions so that you can understand the perspective that the writers were going where they were going with those questions because some people were like dm me and they was getting all deep like well if this happened and this, i said baby don't read too deep into it okay because i'm getting ready to tell y'all how a lot of y'all flipped this and thought it was something else so be ready to have your mind blown real quick so let's go through these questions okay so the first question was well the first statement was my my, my bad is i often worry that my partner will stop loving me so the reason that this is considered an anxious attachment style indicator is because when you are secure in a relationship, you don't typically overwhelm yourself with worry about the fact that one day your partner is just going to wake up and not want to be with you no more and not going to love you no more. Um, people who are secure in their relationships, they know that they know what they bring to the table and they know that if something was to happen in the relationship to cause it to break up, they're not going to internalize that and say, oh, well, it was something I did. It was me. Um, so number two was I find that I bounce back quickly after a breakup. It's weird how I can just put someone out of my mind. So that is an avoidance statement because you're supposed to be able to grieve relationships when they end. Like, if you find yourself being able to break up with somebody and get with somebody else in the next week, then that indicates that your attachments are a little uh, broken. Because, again, the average person who is secure, they may miss the relationship initially and still understand why the relationship is not going to work out. And then number three was, I have di little difficulty expressing my needs and wants to my partner. I think this is one of the ones that confuse people just based on like the semantics of the sentence. So it's pretty much saying, I don't really have difficulty expressing my feelings to my partner because I know that they're going to hear me out and that we're going to be able to have a productive conversation. So that's why that is a secure statement. Um, you feel open and you are ready to be honest with whoever your partner is at the at the um, moment and you, you don't hold back because you're scared of what they may think. So number four was, I am very sensitive to my partner's moods. 
Four is an anxious statement because people with an anxious attachment style, any fluctuation in their partner's behavior or moods, they are extremely sensitive to. Your partner could be having a bad day and come home, and if you say, oh, well, did I do something wrong? If that's your first reaction, then you probably have an anxious attachment style. Because again, it all goes back to that person projecting that it must be something about them that's causing their partner to feel that way instead of the security and knowing that sometimes my partner is just going to have a bad day and I don't need to let every fluctuation in their mood affect me or feel like it has to be a reflection of what I'm doing. Makes sense? Okay. So, um, where are we at? Number five was, I, my partners often want me to be more intimate than I feel comfortable being. This is an avoidance statement. If you are somebody where you feel like every time you talk, you, you're dating somebody and they're like, I just want you to tell me how you feel. Like, I want you to, to act like you really like me or show me more. And that's because you are more than likely nonchalant. When you want your space, you want your space. And so other people don't know how to read that because sometimes it's pretty much you sending mixed signals. I'm just going to throw that out there. Okay. Um, number six was, I'm comfortable sharing my thoughts, my personal thoughts and feelings with my partner. So this is a secure statement. Again, because you're saying that you're in a place where you don't worry that they're going to badly react to how you feel. And there is a comfort level where you feel like there is nothing that you all can't talk about. And that represents a healthy communicative relationship. Um, seven was if someone I've been dating begins to act cold and distant, I worry that I've done something wrong. So this is a anxious statement. And again, back to what I said earlier, it's just about pretty much you internalizing every little thing that your partner feels versus being like, okay, they may be just dealing with something. It doesn't have to be me. That's the difference in that statement. Like, I think most people read that and they're like, well, yeah, if my par partner starts to be cold and distant, um, why wouldn't I think it was me? Well, that's just because we all have moods. So you don't want your first reaction to be, oh, it's me. Let me talk to them and see if it's something going on outside of me that could be the reason why they're acting this way. Not just assuming that it's something that you're doing. Um, number eight... Is sometimes when I get what I want in a relationship, I'm not sure if it's what I want anymore. And that is an avoidance statement. And that is because people who are secure, they know what they want and they get what they want and they're satisfied with what they want. But if you feel like you, you wanted something, wanted something, and then you get it and then you start having second thoughts, that means you're unsure somewhere inside of yourself about why you don't want to be in this situation and you're kind of you might just be doing it just because it felt good at the time but those feelings didn't last and then number nine was an argument with my partner doesn't usually cause me to question our entire relationship this was another one i think confused people because you have to click yes because you agree that you don't that an argument with your partner doesn't cause you to question your relationship. I think people click, some people click no because they read it and was like, well, no, it don't cause me to, to question the relationship thinking to answer it that way. And this is a secure statement because pretty much you're saying that one argument or something where you all have a disagreement is not the end all be all. You understand that in a relationship, you're going to have arguments. And as long as you all are able to healthily communicate about those things, then why we got to get all up on the arm so soon, you know, not jumping the gun about shit. So that's just the breakdown that I was able to provide based on the statements that I gave you. But I'm also going to read excerpts um, which detail the style description. So that way you can get a really accurate picture of what this looks like. Okay, so first I'm going to read um, what the authors wrote about having an anxious attachment style. So, you love to be very close to your romantic partners and have the capacity for great intimacy. You often fear, however, that your partner does not wish to be as close as you would like him or her to be. Relationships tend to consume a large amount of your emotional energy. You tend to be very sensitive to small fluctuations in your partner's moods and actions, and although your senses are often accurate, you take your partner's behaviors too personally. 
You experience a lot of negative emotions within the relationship and get easily upset. As a result, you tend to act out and say things that you later regret. If the other person provides a lot of security and reassurance, however, you are able to shed much of your preoccupation and feel contented. Y'all don't know the reaction that I had when I first got this book after I was dealing with some bullshit and I read that paragraph. I said, oh, you didn't have to read me like that. Sorry, you didn't. Just saying. So if, if that just read your soul, that's you, okay? So let's move on to secure. Being warm and loving in a relationship comes naturally to you. You enjoy being intimate without becoming overly worried about your relationships. You take things in stride when it comes to romance and don't get easily upset over relationship matters. You effectively communicate your needs and feelings to your partner and are strong at reading your partner's emotional cues and responding to them. You share your successes and problems with your mate and you are able to be there for her or him in a time of need. Okay, straight to the point. You got it. We got it. It sounds like mature relationships, pretty much. And avoid it. So, it is very important for you to maintain your independence and self-sufficiency. And you often prefer autonomy to intimate relationships. Even though you do want to be close to others, you feel uncomfortable with too much closeness and tend to keep your partner at arm's length. You don't spend much time worrying about your romantic relationships or being about being rejected. You tend not to open up to your partners and they often complain that you are emotionally distant. In relationships, you are often on high alert for any signs of control or infringement on your territory by your partner. I know that's some of y'all. I know it is. I know it is. So, that's just what they pulled from the book. I now want to read what I have on this other sheet um, as it relates to the anxious and avoidant styles because I think that it's pretty interesting. Um, well, first of all, so on this one, it says that pretty much... The things that make Secure so good at dating in general is they are better at filtering out unworthy partners because they aren't interested in being treated badly by people, okay? So if you're somebody that's able to see, yeah, this is not going to work or this isn't meshing, you don't let it overwhelm you. You're just like, okay, it is what it is. You got to go because you're not about to interrupt what I got going on over here, okay? I feel it, you know? Um, so... Further about anxious, which is 20% of the population. Um, they need plenty of reassurance from their partners. They have more difficulty in being single compared with the other two styles. Um, and they are more likely to, to, to settle for unhealthy relationships. Um, there's also likely to be trust issues with this style. And if an anxious person, a person with an anxious attachment style learns to communicate their needs effectively and they learn to choose secure partners rather than going with the avoidance style, then they um, can grow out of that. Um, and then avoidant. So avoidant attachment stops is about 25% of the population. So between avoidance and, uh, and anxious, that's 45% of the population out here struggling. Okay. So that's what I was saying about avoidance. So, um, they typically are more un very uncomfortable with emotional intimacy. Like when I use that word in a poll, I feel like some people are like, well, now I got the intimate part down pat. No, like this is intimate me synonymous to expressive, meaning um, you don't mind feeling that closeness, not getting it in in the sheets. That's not what I'm talking about. Of course, y'all don't have a problem with that. Anyway, um... Avoidance, they try to either avoid commitment and or construct their lifestyle in such a way to avoid too much contact with their partners, like by keeping a full schedule. You got mother that say they always too busy because we all know mother ain't too busy for what they want to be too busy for. OK, so that's just one of the gems I'm going to drop to y'all about how to pick out these avoidance because y'all are the problem child. No, I'm just playing. That that came from a personal place. I done really been fucked by some, some avoidance, okay? So, there might be a little bias in this video. I'm not going to even lie, okay? Just putting that out there. Um, and they says, avoidance probably have the most difficult time of all in relationships just because satisfaction for them is so elusive. They don't know what they want half the time. They feel like they want it, then they may not want it, then they don't know. Um, and just to give you all a little more information, there is... A fourth style, which is very rare, and it is an anxious avoidant style, attachment style. Um, and the reason why it's pretty rare is just because 
it is characterized by the conflicting desires of wanting to be close to somebody, but also wanting to push them away. And I ain't saying this, but she says that there may be evidence of low psychological health in other areas of their life. Just saying. Um, so, what I've typically seen, because I've had clients who've had this style, and what I believe happens when somebody gets this style is like usually trauma. So if you went through a traumatic experience, a, abuse, assault, things like that, where you really had a good attachment style and you were secure and then somebody violated that, it can cause you to again be void, avoided. So you've gone from you, you're like, you're split. Parts of you want to feel really, really close and want to, have intimate relationships with people and the other part of you just doesn't know how to do that because you're so um scarred from what's happened to you before now don't get to everybody saying oh this me no i just told y'all it's rare this is a rare number so all of y'all don't have this some of y'all are just avoiding and just need to accept it okay um or anxious you know it's a lot again we're 45 percent of the population so um Oh, it was one more thing that I got noted that I needed to read to y'all. And it was probably a word. So before I move on, let's let's look at this. Because this one is in the book. Okay. Um, oh, and... Well, no, I think I'll, I'll talk about this later. So, the last thing for my anxious people. Anxious people may take a very long time to get over a bad attachment and they don't get to decide how long it will take. Only when every single cell in their body is completely convinced that there is no chance that their partner will change or that they will ever reunite will they be able to deactivate and let go. Um, so something that the book also refers to is this thing called activation strategies that anxious people do in order to reestablish closeness if they feel like something is wrong. So that could be, you know, sending gifts or sending like a gesture if somebody is ignoring you or just trying to force yourself, trying to force the conversation until that person just lets you know, like, we good. You don't have to trip. We're good. Um, so a lot of those, a lot of simple relationship issues that arise, again, it goes back to them taking it personally and them doing everything in their power, even if they may regret the shit, to reestablish that closeness. So there's one more section in the book that talks about, like, you know, what if you're still not sure what your attachment styles are? Like, some people do the quiz and they start reading the descriptions and they're like, oh, that's me for sure, or that's me. And some people are like, eh, I don't know. But what truly determines really your attachment style in, in, in romantic relationships is your comfort with intimacy and closeness or the degree to which you try to avoid that intimacy and closeness, and your anxiety about your partner's love and attentive, attentiveness and your preoccupation with the relationship. So again, that goes back to what they were saying as far as anxious people, they exert a lot of emotional energy when it comes to relationships because they are typically overly concerned with what's taking place because they don't want to lose it. So the next thing I feel like is important to talk about is to educate my fellow anxious. I don't think I'm really anxious attachment style no more. I think I was when I was still working through a lot of stuff. I feel like a, a bitch is secure now, but I might be a little half and half. We still do. We still got some work to do. Okay. A part of me is, is definitely still anxious just because I have anxiety. Like, I don't think that's ever going to change. So I think it's important to inform my fellow anxious attachment style folks what to look for when it comes to avoidance and secures y'all need to know what to look for when it comes to avoidance because baby when we talk about if styles can be changed yes and if a person is anxious and they get in a relationship with somebody who is secure they can become secure and if a secure gets in a relationship with an avoidant they might try to they they might drag your ass down with them okay so you need to be just as cautious as the rest of us out here so I'm going to go ahead and reference this page so that y'all y'all can really get a word in, okay? So, these are the typical signs that you're dealing with an avoidant. Listen up closely because some of y'all going to really gasp when y'all realize this is somebody who's been in your inbox for the last six months. They send mixed signals. 
seem distant and aloof, yet vulnerable at the same time, which you find irresistible. That little cat and mouse game, that's what the fuck that is. Um, sometimes they call you a lot. Sometimes they don't call you at all or text you at all. Sometimes they text you all the time. Same context. Um, they say things that can seem like big gestures, like, oh, like, talk about moving in with you or talking about having a baby or something. Just something like that make it seem like they really like your ass and then they later act like they don't see a future with you all as a couple. Like, well, well I mean, who knows if we're going to even be together next year. Like, shit like that, okay? Um, they value his or her uh, independence greatly. So they look down on dependency and neediness. I need a lot of space. Um, my work takes up too much of my time. So there's no room for anything serious in my life right now. Um, yeah. Three, they devalue you. Um, so sometimes they describe someone was once really interested in it when they were first, when they first started dating, but after a couple of days, they began to be act like they were turned off by something minor. Um, or he <laughs> cheated on a past partner. Just throwing that out there. Um, so they use distancing strategies. Uh, so like, let's say they, they was dating. Eh, I don't really like that example. They might prefer to go sleep at home. Like, oh, I like my bed. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't sleep at other people's houses, that type of ordeal. Um, they prefer taking vacations or going places alone. Um, they emphasize boundaries in the relationships. Oh, baby, ladies, let me tell you who this is. I mean, we know. Ne I never said that you that we was together. I never said that we. When you ask that, what are we? And he get the spieling that little spiel. Th that's what that is. Establishing and emphasizing boundaries in the relationship, so you don't even get it twisted that this ain't. He don't even want you to think that this what this is. Okay. Um. They may not even want you at their place. They prefer to come to yours because they don't want nobody in their space. Um, they have an unrealistic romantic view of how a relationship should be. So they talk longingly about finding that perfect person one day as if anybody is fucking perfect. Um, they idolize a past relationships, but they're like very vague about what went wrong in that relationship. Um, they are mistrustful, so they fear being taken advantage of by a partner. All y'all motherfuckers that be... I, I ain't, I don't want to be, I need to make sure she ain't using me for my money. Boy, I told y'all before, don't nobody want y'all 40, 50, maybe 60K having this, okay? So that's them. I, I need to make sure ain't nobody with me for my, my money. Uh, thinks that dating is, taking a girl out on dates and paying is like, uh, like strong arming a man or some shit like that. Fear, look, I just told y'all this. Fear's partner will take financial advantage of him or her. Didn't I just say that? Didn't I just say that? And that was before I even read it. Just, just letting y'all know. Um, what else is good for y'all to know? Has rigid view of relationships and uncompromising rules which you must com comply with. Um, has strong preference for a certain type of partner. Is certain it's best to live in separate houses or not get married. Make sweeping statements like all women or men want such and such. Or after you get married or moved in together, they change on you. Doesn't like talking on the phone, even if this is your main way to connect. <laughs> During a disagreement, needs to get away or just explodes. You know what? Forget it. I don't want to talk about it. Gets up and walks out in a fury. So, yeah, it's a lot of them here. Doesn't make his or her intentions clear, leaves you guessing as to his or her feelings, has difficulty talking about what's going on between you. So if you want to have that conversation, like, you know, I'm, I just kind of want to know what we're doing. And they get all, avoid it, that's all I'm saying, okay? Um, what else, what else? Oh, something else you need to know about avoidance. These are the telltale statements from them when you are in a place where you want to emotionally um, connect with them and have a conversation around, you know, your feelings or whatever's going on. You're too sensitive, demanding, or needy. You're too needy. How many times have y'all heard that before? Um, I don't want to talk about it. Stop analyzing everything. You overthinking everything. What do you want from me? I didn't do anything wrong. Um, I said I was sorry. That type of attitude. That's all I'm going to say about that. 
Um, and then the last thing I want y'all to know about these avoidance, baby, is the finesse, okay? Because they really are finessers. Get into this. So the avoided person can have his or her cake and eat it too, so to speak. He or she can enjoy the thrill and closeness you naturally project when you are together without having to consider your needs for intimacy and togetherness the rest of the time. By being someone you're not, you're allowing another person to be with you on his or her term, own terms and come and go as, he, as they please. Y'all hear that, my anxious folks? Don't be letting these motherfuckers come in, come in and then out this house. They got to stay in or they got to go out. They can't do both. That's all I'm saying. Um, so now that I've given you the, the warning signs of your avoidance, like if you don't even read this, you should be able to take that and apply it to the rest of your day life. I and promise. the last thing I want to share with you all about the anxious attachment system um, is something that I like immediately felt connected to. So it says that people with an anxious attachment style have a super sensitive attachment system. If you have an anxious attachment style, you possess a unique ability to sense when your relationship is threatened. Even a slight hint that something may be wrong will activate your attachment system. And once it's activated, you are unable to calm down until you get a clear indication from your partner that he or she is truly there for you and that the relationship is safe. I briefly mentioned that earlier, but I just wanted to know, know y'all, I wasn't talking out my ass that this shit is here, okay? So, by knowing these things, you can try to get your shit together. You can try to not let people get you out your body. I swear it stopped, it, it really helped me. I'm, I'm going to touch on what it's done for me later until I'm finished with the need to know information for y'all for this video. So, another fun, a couple fun facts that I think are important for you guys to know. Uh, among singles, statistically, there are more avoidance since people with a secure attachment style are more likely to be in a relationship. These motherfuckers all being happy together, leaving us out here to fend for our fucking selves. Um, unlike avoidance, they aren't searching for an ideal. So when a relationship ends, they aren't single for too long. These are my open people. Okay. Um, and I'm sure this is a question a lot of people are asking. So like who typically dates who? Get a load of this. Anxious women are more likely to date avoidant men. So we just set ourselves up for failure. Set ourselves up for heartbreak and confusion. You notice that your relationships and your dating patterns and all of that are, they have the same type of dance, the same routine. Baby, this is, I guarantee you, it's an anxious avoidant cycle. Okay? Um, so, when it comes to who can date, who typically dates who, secure types can deal with dating both anxious and avoidant types. They're comfortable enough with themselves to give anxious types all the reassurance they need and to give avoidant types the space that they need without feeling threatened themselves. With that being said, secure types might seem, bo seem boring for anxious and avoidant types because there is no drama. I always emphasize that part to my clients because so many people are used to the drama in the relationship. The, the real, like when it's good, it's great, but when it's bad, it's nasty and real ugly. It's not supposed to be such big extremes. I want y'all to know that. It, it's a part of it's supposed to feel boring. And it's going to feel boring for a lot of people because you know why I said this before. A lot of people confuse chaos with passion. They think, oh, because we had these nasty ass, blow up ass arguments and we have amazing makeup sex and so our relationship is okay. No, I want y'all to know that that rhetoric is unhealthy. Yes, makeup sex is great, but it shouldn't always come after y'all been screaming and throwing shit at each other for the last 30 minutes. That's all I'm saying. You know, so again, if you used to that real high when you high, it's amazing. But then when down, when they ain't acting right, the shit is damn near unbearable. You're you're, in, you're doing that dance. You're doing that dance. So as I mentioned earlier, it is possible to change attachment styles. However, um, and I told you because I'm in the process or I have done that, whatever you want to call it. Um... And one thing that I think is very interesting about this sheet is it pretty much says that you can make a conscious effort to move yourself to a more secure style. But this takes building your self-knowledge, therapy, um, and people who have an anxious attachment style need to work on self-esteem and self-worth. Um, and for avoidance, the project is about learning how to be more compassionate and how to connect with people in a way in which they receive that well. Um, both insecure types want to work on their relationships with fear. One, 
anxious, fearing that they're going to do something wrong to mess it up or that the relationship is going to end and avoidance fearing that somebody is going to come in and try to tell them what to do and take over all that shit and it's going to be a huge ass mess that they don't want so they're going to continue to avoid it make sense yeah so i just want to leave you all with a couple of self-awareness exercises for each type so if you're anxious you want to learn how to communicate your needs um, this will not only guarantee less anxiety for you, but it will help you to filter out inappropriate partners. That was a game changer for me, okay? Um, because, again, sometimes we definitely let attraction overcloud our judgment for if somebody is compatible for us as far as our emotional needs. And we typically get intimate before we can figure that out and so now when you intimate the attachment is already through the roof and now you got to try to figure out if this person can even meet your emotional needs now that the attachment is so strong so that's another reason why i told y'all you know don't jump into bed with everybody because early on you may not be able to tell somebody is an avoidant because they all up in your face because they want they ready to be close at that point and then all of a sudden you done gave it up and now this motherfucker not answering the phone and you want to ride past his house I know y'all know what I'm talking about. That feeling, that rage, why he acting funny, the dance, that's the dance. Um, so yeah, you, you want to, it really helps you perfect learning how to filter out the people who you know are not going to give you what you need off back. Um, and again, the effective communication is the key to having a secure attachment style. You're not afraid to talk about what you need to talk about or let somebody know when they not mean your needs correctly. Um, avoidance. So, you all need to start becoming aware of where you use your deactivation strategies. Any behavior, which that is, any behavior or thought that is used to divert intimacy. Um, so, these strategies can include saying you're not ready to commit, but staying, to, staying with somebody or, you know what, this is for you all, you men who like to engage in situationships and then like act like you don't know why she's asking what are we. This is for you all because I don't care what y'all believe or say, if you going on dates with somebody, having sex with somebody every, every day, every other day, um, Y'all sharing each other's deepest, darkest secrets. You laying up, cooking breakfast, all this intimate bonding ass stuff. And then you want to turn around and say, you don't, I don't know. We just kicking it. I will cut you. I will cut you. So that's what that is. Saying you're not ready to commit, but continuing to stay in a situation and do a whole bunch of relationship type shit. And if y'all want to argue with me about what relationship type shit is, we can go there in another video, okay? Just letting y'all know, because y'all know I'm with the shits. Um, focusing on small imperfections in your partner. So every time you get to know somebody, you, it's cool. And then all of a sudden, your ass, oh, her pinky toenail is shaped funny, so I don't want to fuck with her no more. That type of stuff. Um, pulling away when things are going well. So again, that fear that, oh shit, like I might actually be like in some shit and I don't know what the fuck to do about it. Um, forming relationships with an impossible future. So you on vacation and you meet a bitch that live in South Africa and you feel like, hmm, let's try that out. Knowing damn well that if she ain't gonna move and you ain't gonna move, what y'all gonna do? Right. Things like that. Avoiding physical closeness. Um, so I like this example. It's things like pacing ahead when walking with your partner. So when a man isn't walking with you, but he's walking ahead of you, like that type of thing. Beware. All of these things, these little signals, these, these things mean something, okay? Um, and so for avoidance, it's important that when these, when you start noticing yourself engaging in these little things that you realize that your picture is skewed and... That you, you do need intimacy even if you're uncomfortable with it. Everybody wants somebody. That's human nature. So if you want people, I don't need nobody, you a lie. Or a psychopath. Which one? Which one you want to be? And lastly, so for you secures out there, you have to be very careful about giving someone too much of the benefit of the doubt. 
um, or staying in a relationship just because you can tolerate what they're doing to you. So a lot of times these are the people who sit in a relationship when they kind of know that it's over anyway and don't really take action because they're not extremely bothered by it either. So that's just something to think about. I hope that this was super educational for you all. Again, this is what the book looks like. I encourage everybody um, who is interested in improving how they date and their success in their relationships to read this, learn your style. Again, this, to me, this is just as important as knowing that love language stuff. Um, this just hasn't been as publicized, but I feel like it's just as important because, again, by learning these things, I felt so much more in control of my dating life and the people that I was allowing into my space. I know that I am somebody, I when I get emotionally invested, it is 110% all the time. Like, I don't half-ass that stuff. When I fall, I'm in that shit for real, for real. So I have to be very careful about who I allow those feelings to grow for. Like, people, we, we sometimes we make the mistake of attaching ourselves to somebody who doesn't want us to be attached to them. And that's where you, you fuck up. And that's where you are left kind of feeling like, well, everything felt perfect for me. I just wanted to do everything in my power to maintain it, even when somebody is showing you that the, the shit ain't worth being maintained. Okay? So, use this knowledge. Use this little bit of awareness. Because, again, the book, it dives. It, it reads everybody. And so, you really want to be able to use this so that way you can navigate your dating life better. And you stop dealing with a lot of bullshit because you don't have to. Like, I stopped... My radar for bullshit was so foolproof after reading this. Yeah, I can still have a couple, you know, and, but I wasn't as emotionally affected when things went left. And that's what I feel like has been the biggest improvement for me. Because again, a lot of my anxiety um, is relationship oriented. So when I'm talking to somebody, when I'm in a relationship with somebody, I have a bigger chance of being triggered. And so... By being able to to point out people who I can't and can't effectively communicate with, it saved me a lot of time and energy. Because again, sometimes people are committed to misunderstanding you. So you can explain something as clear as day. And if they're commit, not committed to hearing you out or understanding where you're coming from, that, that you're still going to feel emotionally unsatisfied. So that's all I got today. Again, if you would like to participate in future polls, please follow my Instagram at bring it back, bring it back underscore. I can't talk y'all. B-R-I-N-G-B-R-A-T underscore. Okay, y'all have a good evening. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk.